Okie doke. Let's hope this works. Yeah, I think this is the first time I've used the um, overhead uh, webcam setup kind of th thing with the, um, the war table. Um, and I will say a few things off the bat. Um, forgive me if you see a bit of, uh, well, not naked, total nakedness, but at least my top half, it's flipping hot and humid. And uh, I was just, yeah, so I'm just going to stick with it. You may also, yeah, see my funky head and whatnot. Um, secondly, uh, send out some good vibes to um, Leo. He's been having some digestive issues. Um, I think it's par partially due to me, due to the fact that um, I just never clued in, man. I just, like he's, I, I won't get into too much of the food thing, but... Um, yeah, anyways, I should have yeah been more careful. I, this is my second um, warning sign that he's going to end up dying. Like, I mean, everybody dies, everything dies. But what I'm trying to say is, uh, and it doesn't mean it's going to happen next week or next year or two years from now, but it's just a thing to remind me to psychically prepare myself that it's not such a shock. Um, yeah, I did that also with um, uh, our dog, uh, Marley. Uh, Zoe had... Um, that was the dog that Zoe and I had um, with us and it took me about two years before um, I ended up getting uh, Leo like with Zoe actually but Leo has been more my type of uh, you know it's been more that type of a one-one relationship whereas like Zoe had a completely completely separate relationship with um, with Marley than I did it was you know well good god they slept together for in the same bed for a freaking, huh? <laughs> uh, I still get, uh, I still get, la I still laugh about it because, uh, well, she actually doesn't even remember us getting Marley, but uh, much later on, <laughs> I can remember her complaining that, uh, oh, uh, Marley keeps taking up the bed, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, Zoe, Marley's not taking up the bed. You're getting bigger, man. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fun. Anyways, I'll, I'm just going to, I will say this as well. This has been so freeing to not have to deal with the freaking uh, fiddling around. I know you're not going to see as good as um, like close up and all that stuff. I'll do that later for other whatevers. But it's so freeing to just be, ooh, uh, it's just nice. Um, yeah, so I'll, do, I'll just tell you what's been going on because the big stuff's about to happen, which is this here. And I have to, it's, it's, I have to get rid of the trenches. I have to also remind myself that you can't see the close up bits that I can see. I'll tell you a little bit, a uh, little bit of what has been happening. So all the blue air, uh, things that you can see there, I hope, uh, those are, um, were movement, uh, things that, yeah, were shifted around. So basically all the Germans have been doing is just trying to get everybody, okay, this is who you've got, so on and so forth. This one, on the other hand, uh, the 4th Cavalry Division, yep, uh, I do remember that, that's amazing. Uh, that's going, that's been assigned from the 9th Army to the 8th Army, which is specifically uh, the 2nd uh, the Corps uh, here with uh, Von Redern. Um, however, I put a little pink thing because I wanted to add some bits of narrative and because there's been so much freaking communication back and forth, things are getting lost in the shuffle. I understand that German, uh, you know, there's there's multiple, look, I'm also reading um, a thing at work, uh, one of my side books that I'm reading um, uh, to help with my narrative, like how to uh, do postcard things back and forth, you know, uh, for my role playing and whatnot. Um, uh, I'm looking at um, uh, the Canadian military, how they specifically did things. And we're talking about memos and so on and so forth. And they were also saying, like, don't just keep freaking sending things left, right, and flip and center. Because uh, even in good days kind of thing, things get lost in the shuffle. And so it's just amazing to see. Uh, anyways, I don't want to, whatever. So I was like, okay, I'm going to add a bit of uh, narrative here. So the, the instruction, you see, this nice little direct line from Hindenburg to Ludendorff. That's also for the Krieg for You're going to see that in a minute. But uh, I was like, okay, there's a lot of stuff going on around here. So I was like, you know what? The instructions have gone out to the 4th Cavalry Division that you are now being assigned to the 8th Army, specifically the 2nd Corps, von Redden over here, and you're going to go to there. And you're supposed to go over here, but you're not uh, because he's frozen in time kind of thing. Um, 
the instructions haven't gone there. So he's like, what's going on? Uh, there, because there's a lot of stuff here. I've moved some Fistung Division, uh, inf Infantry Divisions from uh, the Lots and uh, Garrison Corps here, I remember, under, um, under control of um, uh, Charles Tortoise over here. And uh, some of it went to Second Corps. The other one uh, got assigned to the Kriegfrosch, which is a direct link to the Hindenburg L Ludendorff um, sector command here, uh, HQ. And I was like, I don't know what to do with this Kriegfrosch anymore because remember Operation Luther is basically dead in the water due to the fact that the freaking Russians moved the goddamn um, sector headquarters, Mount Doom. They moved it. It's like, ugh, whatever. Anyway, so that's been all moved, shifted around. Everything's looking kind of good. Um, I'm a little bit, you know, but there's, like I said, there's only you can so much you can do. And I also had to play it role play. That's another thing. I'm starting to have to start looking at, uh, I was actually, it was specifically for Dan Wap over here. You know, it's, you know, 04 November, next turn. But anyways, um, and I, wanted, I was like, look, you got to start like, um, role playing the personality somewhat it just can't be always me doing whatever um but you get the idea um the next biggie thing here is now this is going to be the first bit of um the november uh massive attack uh here we go two turns this becomes a trench two turns that's going to become a trench that's a trench Four turns, two turns. This person obviously looks a bit um, jutted out, but there's 10 strength points there. There's 22 there, and there's seven. Uh, 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 Robert uh, Schubert over here uh, has uh, the Ninth Army. Uh, commander has uh, 10 supply points, and he's within... Uh, he's within counterattacking, whatever's, but not uh, attacking. So I'll have to, uh, he can move. And there's also uh, a core HQ over here, but uh, that's, uh, that would be Kosh, the 11th core. Yes. Um, that, he's got eight, um, eight supply points, I do believe. And did I give some to, to the 12th core, which would be. Uh, Boy, Adele, gosh, do I ever like having these little things here. And there's a side um, thank you, Char uh, Charles Latora, because I never thought about these things until I saw some of it, you know, some of his uh, playthroughs. And I was like, ooh, I like that bit. And on a, a second um, nod um, is going to be, <clears throat> as well as uh, Meandering Mike, you see these things here, like because of the constant reminders of um, the amazing things the German Rail can do. Oh. Oh, on a side note, I'm, I don't know if I can remember how to do it. I had this little um, jingle ad or whatever you want to call it for the Germans, uh, like in a recruitment ad going um, something such as, uh, are you always fed up of uh, never getting on time, um, having to walk um, a fair distance, but always having to go through like really terrible terrain, so on and so forth. Um, why not enlist with the German army? Uh, and uh, you can use uh, the amazing military rail um, and we'll get you there on time. Maybe not where you want to go, but certainly where we want you to go. That type of thing. I was like, yeah, it's having fun. But anyways, these three guys took up a lot of rail uh, capacity, but tough. Like <laughs> some of these guys where it was like, I'm just moving them a few axes over here. But it was like, it, I was able to get them there because, you know, I'm, it's horrible terrain here. I mean, look at this. You got forests and lakes and rivers and obviously enemy zones of control oh but done wicked um so anyways that's it now i've got to figure out uh the main main thing i i'm not really that worried i'm also thinking i'm gonna start unleashing the hounds here with this type of map uh letting it well i, I shouldn't do it yet but well obviously it's gonna be ready for january but mm, i'd like to do some fun stuff with it um and that's it. Um, so this is this is what I'm going to be thinking about this uh, for this map here. Oh, and then we are, you know, let's get on to. I've also um, on the Ottoman for the Caucasus. Oh, I'm getting better. Caucasus uh, front, uh, and then the army. I stripped it apart nicely and also incorporated the um, the discrepancy, which I'm calling the big adjustment. What I see is a discrepancy. It may not be. Doesn't matter. Everything's going to be working great. 
uh, is the um, uh, discrepancy between the grand campaign schedule and the Eastern Front schedule. And I am, you know, wove that in kind of thing with the, um, what the heck is it? Uh, uh, the Caucasus Front um, Army for uh, November 1914 in the Osmanli Harvey um, thing. So I, I took those things, I made two armies, relatively good, and left, as you know, this pathetic little thing up over there, um, up in the Caucasus. Like, it, it's terrible, but tough. Um, like, it, honestly, if the Ottomans wanted to be sneaky and go mental in there, they could. And there's another thing. I've got so much more to read. It is not flippant funny. Um, uh, all this connection. I was like, oh, boy. Like, I didn't realize there's a lot of... Per, uh, Things with Persia and interests, and there is this other thing which I'm um, hopefully going to talk about on Saturday with and connect it with Charles Tortoise. Uh, Charles Tortoise, I'm doing it again. <laughs> Charles Latora, um, well, his uh, uh, talk about Napoleon and one of uh, one of the comments about uh, what an a hole he was and so on and so forth. Um, and then I was looking up. Uh, I'm not sure if they're called Sir. Circassia or Circassia and it's, it's on the east northeastern part of the Black Sea and they had this Russo Circassia Circassia war and oh massive genocide it's just massive it was just like holy like remember I'm getting just only whatever whatever bits but then I found out about this SOB uh, Grigory Zas and so on and so forth anyway so it's going to be in, all that stuff's going to be incorporated in a for me. Remember, I'm doing my stuff, man, because uh, I want to learn about history and pop it into my narrative and doing a whole nine yards. So you, some people would be like, I'm not going to have Gregory's ass, um, whatever, but I'm going to have his flippin' name in here, and I'm going to like stick it to them in some ways, because I'm going to represent Circassia uh, in some flippin' way for uh, an army that's coming that way, and I'm going to constantly have my inside jokes for myself to remind me of certain things that uh, went on and it's gonna send me off on another uh, uh, avenue or route of learning about things, really. Okay, that's about it. Like I said, I'm gonna have to figure out about all this trench stuff and on the other side note, oh, you wanna bring it up to another level for uh, strategic Lord knows what's. Um, oh God, I'm loving this. I'm just L-O-V-E loving it. Um, yeah, it's, what, what can I say? I can just go on forever, man. I'm just, yeah, and I'm going to start thinking about um, the live stream stuff. Remember, it's 10 o'clock now. And, um, yeah, I'll talk about that later as well, like figuring out whether or not, uh, like, what way it's going to go and so on and so forth. But uh, hope you're having a good time. This has been uh, interesting because I watched the flipping thing, so I don't even know if it broke. I've said that before. But uh, it was the first time to do an overhead thingamajig. So, uh, yeah. Get, oh, oh, did I mention uh, Leo? I think I did, probably. Um, yeah, yeah send him, uh, him a little bit of uh, whatever. He's been having some uh, interesting digestive issues. But like I said, it's mostly... Um, I just wasn't being a smart puppy. With um, just wasn't thinking, you know? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, you are what you eat kind of thing. And... Mm. I was always like, yeah, he's a picky eater, so I was like going with it that way, and I was like, dude, you like, so what? He eats, he eats the crap food, but it's like, that's like giving somebody crap food all the time, like always letting them go to McDonald's just because, you know, and it's like, well, it's not a good idea. Like, you have to get them tough. You got to eat your broccoli kind of thing, so, or, well, you, you know, you know what I mean, metaphorically, so. All right. Oh, ah, uh, you, ooh. All right, sorry. <laughs> Just having a love fest. Okay, see ya.